Hey there, everyone. It is time for the April wrap-up, so without further ado, let's get right into it. My plan for this month was to read five books. With I didn't quite make that goal, and there were varying levels of success. First, I'm going to start with the book I didn't actually get around to, and that is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. The story of the book is essentially it focuses on the friendship between an angel and a demon and their adventures while they're tracking down the Antichrist and trying to prevent the apocalypse from occurring. If it sounds absurd, that's because it probably is. But if you're familiar with Neil Gaiman and or Terry Pratchett, that's nothing out of the ordinary. I really wanted to get around to this book. Unfortunately, I didn't finish reading the rest of the of the books before the end of the month, so I didn't even bother getting around to it. Um, for now, it's just going to go back onto my shelf, and if I have a TBR later on down the line in which I finish all the books I have planned for it, then maybe I'll go back to my shelf and pick up Good Almonds and start reading it. Uh, I don't see myself dedicating a TBR to it again anytime soon. It's probably just going to be one of those random, oh hey, I need an extra book to read, I'll pick it up type thing. So for the books I actually did finish before the end of the month, because just like March, uh, I didn't finish all of them before the month carried over. It was the two manga volumes, naturally, that I finished first. First was Black Butler Volume 2. Um, Black Butler is a manga series that follows a young boy, about 12 years old, named Seal Phantom Hive. Uh, he is from a noble family in Victorian England, and his trusty Demon Butler at his side. This book started the first story arc, the first actual story arc in the manga, which you may or may not be surprised to hear that the story arc focuses on Jack the Ripper, what this author what this author's interpretation of the Jack the Ripper stuff would entail if it was involving these characters. Now, I'm I've only ever heard of Jack the Ripper, but I've never actually researched it or what it was about. Nonetheless, I found the interpretation of the Jack the Ripper murders and the people involved to be interesting. Even though a lot of it was fictitious involving fictitious characters, I love the fact that there was still as much actual fact in there as they could put out, aside from that. Um, you also get introduced to a new uh, type of enemy slash ally? in this book ish which turned out to be interesting the volume ended on a cliffhanger i know this is only two volumes in but i feel coming back to black butler because i read the first eight volumes before i've had them for a while i i really love how the art and the storytelling is and um yana toboso really does her job with her research and and she She's very good at mixing her own fictitious stuff with research of the, the, the language, the customs, and the design of the era. You, it, manga aside, it feels realistic. And then I also finished the second and final volume of Codename Sailor V, the prequel to Sailor Moon that focuses on Sailor Venus, who was the first Sailor Guardian to wake up. Um, that volume was mostly episodic, just like the first volume. But uh, there was a thread that kind of was gradually behind everything for most of the book and then eventually came to fruition at the end. I found that the end was fairly interesting, especially in terms of if you're familiar with Sailor Venus in the mainline series and then you read this one, it does help to explain a lot about who she was before and her experiences before because when she gets introduced into this series she already knows a fair bit she was already watching the others for a while and all that jazz and to see what brought her up to that point is quite intriguing before i move on to the rest of the tbr just a small update as to what i'm planning on doing with manga reviews going forward i haven't done any manga reviews yet um but I decided early on that reviewing one volume at a time, probably not the wisest idea. Because manga volumes, at least the normal ones, normally have only f between four and six chapters. 
usually, depending. And because it's very much a visual medium as well as a literary medium, that's not always enough room to tell a proper story. So it ends up going for multiple volumes usually. So what I'm decided to do is review manga in terms of story arcs when it comes to regular manga volume distribution. Obviously, um, bigger collections or omnibus uh, volumes are going to be different because that has contents of several volumes in one book. But when it comes to regular volume releases like Sailor Moon, Black Butler, Attack on Titan, not that I'm going to read Attack on Titan, but I'm using it as an example. The idea is to wait until a story arc finishes, even if it's partway through a volume, and then I'll review the story arc as a whole, and then continue on that way. So with Codename Sailor V, there's two volumes for the complete story arc, so I'll be reviewing both of those in one video. For Black Butler, I believe there's, for the first um, part of the series anyways, it's like three volumes. So it'd be all three of those volumes comprising the review video. If by chance you want to hear about the, the volumes individually, I will still talk about them a little bit on an individual level in wrap-ups like this video. And I always put up a review for every single volume on Goodreads, maybe not right away, but I normally try to get around to it either before I get a review video up or right on the day or right after, roughly around the same time. For the next book, uh, Dracula's Brood, it's a short story collection comprising stories from the mid to late 19th century to almost the mid 20th century. And these are lesser known stories um, by authors that are, some of them are known for other things, like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, for example, he has a story in here. And if I remember correctly, he's known for Sherlock Holmes, is that right? Did I get it right? I hope I did. Um, and then there's some lesser known ones as well. And uh, because this is a vampire book, I will have a dedicated review for this book specifically coming up soon. So I'm not going to talk too much about this. I will say I enjoyed it for what it is. It's a bit of a mixed bag because short story collections, they're all over the place, especially since this is by multiple authors, right? But I'm happy I bought it, I'm happy I read it, and I do feel this is a good read for someone who wants to experience some of the history when it comes to vampire fiction, because a lot of it came to a, a head in the Victorian era, where it suddenly became a popular thing to write about in general. Dracula and Carmilla and other stories like that aside that are more well known, it's nice to have something like that in which you can experience multiple authors doing their own take on it. And uh, I look forward to discussing that further in its own special review, its own dedicated review. For this last one, it is book four in Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles, The Tale of the Body Thief. <sighs> because I read most of the books in the series before, I already had an idea what I was getting to going into that book. I made myself read through it this time. It wasn't too bad because I'm used to Anne Rice's writing and it, it's, I don't, I'm not fond of it, but it's not because it's written badly per se. It's not written badly. I just think some less than desirable choices were made, <laughs> or at least choices that, um, you know, like anything, a book will vibe with some people and not vibe with other people. And for those who love The Tale of the Body Thief, that's great. Not exactly what I read vampire books for. And, uh, yeah, it... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna save the rest of that commentary for its own dedicated review, because I've got, I've got things to say about that book, and most of them are not that great. Just saying. Alright, so there we have it. These are the... Whoa. <laughs> These are the five books that I planned on reading during April with varying levels of success. I look forward to hearing about your thoughts on those books. Um, thank you for watching this video. I post a new one every Tuesday and Friday. Have a good one, guys. Bye.